Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to my repair and restoration channel. It's been a while since I made a video that I uh, wanted to do one on this uh, uh, little device here that's uh, approximately 40 years old. I was needing, just the other day, a tape player to test a piece of old equipment to run an audio signal through. And uh, so I drug out my 40-year-old Panasonic uh, tape recorder that has uh, a nice output here that uh, I could use to run straight into a, an amplifier I was working on. And uh, when I pulled it out, I haven't used this thing since probably, well, 1996 maybe. But when I did, it was pretty rough shape. Uh, even though it hasn't been used, the leatherette case here, although it looks nice now, was just a total mess. I mean, this thing was, it had leached out all of its uh, inorganic properties that, uh, happen when uh, things get old, especially when they're uh, simulated leather or, or leatherette like I call them. And it was just ugly. It was like nine kinds of gross. It was sticky. It was gooey. It had what looked like oil leaching out of it. And when you touched it, it just stuck to your hands and you couldn't get it off. It wasn't black or anything like a lot of those products are when you... Uh, when they start to deteriorate. It was just very sticky and oily and grungy and grimy. But I'm gonna show you right quick what I did to fix that. It's it's in good shape now, but I went out to my garage and I got me a can of uh, lacquer thinner, and uh, which is largely acetone and a little bit of toluene in it. But, uh, so I dampened a rag on it went over this real well with it and it took all that grungy, grimy, sticky, gooey stuff off of it. And uh, it was a little bit dull, so I wanted to shine it up a little bit and brighten it up a little bit. So I uh, uh, got out my uh, wet and black foam for tires and sprayed it on there and uh, let it settle a ball, wiped it off, and uh, gave, it a little, gave a little bit of shine to it now, and uh, it feels more, more natural now. But this stuff is, uh, basically it's just carnauba wax. There's nothing really special about it, except it's in liquid form. And uh, so uh, just put a little carnauba wax on that, and that fixed that right up. And uh, so uh, now I can, uh, use it without having to feel like I got to take a shower afterwards so anyway back to this project and um, so I uh, stuck a tape in here and uh, want to play it of course you notice the battery case is empty that's because like most things that you leave the batteries in more than a couple of months now, ends up doing, yeah, dura leaks. And this was even before uh, uh, that company took them over uh, that made them even worse, at least uh, with this one. You notice the date on it is uh, January, used before January 2001. And uh, normally at that time, back then, you could uh, safely get 10 years after you buy the battery. They would put a label on here, used before January 2001. But uh, this would normally indicate that it was purchased about uh, 1991, maybe. But... Uh, yeah, that was when Duracell actually made them. And uh, 
instead of the company that took them over. Anyway, it just uh, totally wrecked the, the battery pack holder here. And uh, uh, this is after I cleaned it up. I just filled a cup full of vinegar and dropped this in it for a couple of hours. Let the vinegar do its thing. And uh, once it did, I just uh, went over it with a... Uh, a little bit of steel wool and a, a fine brush and then I uh, it was just bare copper after that so uh, to keep that from corroding and tarnishing more I uh, took a soldering iron and uh, just hit it with some solder and wiped the solder off that gave a little bit of a tin coating to it so it won't corrode quite as fast on that so uh, battery pack works fine now so anyway, I didn't need a, need the pack, so I just went and got the uh, AC adapter, plugged it in, and hit the play switch, and oh shit! Wonderful. Now huh? we are in trouble. That is classic motorboating sound. Uh, it's a little fast, but uh, it's, it's typical motorboating sound. Like Lovely, huh? So anyway, that is almost always uh, a leaky capacitor inside. And so I uh, think we'll, uh, today we're going to tear this apart and we're going to see, uh, see if we can find that leaky capacitor. And I mean uh, electronically leaky. Could be physically leaky too, but uh, we're going to try the electronic route first and uh, see if we can get this thing working again. Uh, one bit of testing we can do is let me hit the record button here and see. Test, test, one, two. Test, test, one, two. Check, one, two. Well, you can see it's uh, not moving the VU meter except when I talk. So that kind of indicates that the uh, problem is probably in the uh, audio output stage area. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, open this up and see what we can find, okay? easy enough. There we go. I think we can pull it out this way. There we go. That's the way. A couple of wires to the speaker there. Well, I think we have some screws here that would probably free that board up a little bit. There's always one more. Okay. Put that on the pile. Okay, I think we discovered what's holding us up here a little bit. And uh, part of it's this uh, battery pack that we need to... Uh, free up the connector strip here. That will help a little bit. And it looks like we may have to... It's nice that they left some extra wire here that they twisted up neatly. That was nice of them. There we go. 
Okay. Now what I want to do is find the output transistor. Here's the, uh, you can see right here, this is the uh, output speaker, or I'm sorry, the uh, output transformer. Going to, looks like there's a transistor there. That might be the final output, I'm not sure. Still thinking it's uh, part of this right here, but uh, we can unsolder both of those and and uh, check the capacitors. This one that looks like and that's an inductor there, but uh, you definitely want to uh, test or change these uh, tiny electrolytics here. And uh, if that doesn't help any, we'll work our way forward. Looks like these blue ones, uh, these light blue ones are Rubicon. They're usually pretty good capacitors. Uh, these gray ones, they're kind of notorious for going bad. So it could be one of those too. Anyway, uh, let me uh, do some checking and uh, we'll be right back and uh, tell you what we came up with. Okay, in uh, going over this, I checked a couple of capacitors here and they all, they I checked this one and uh, there's one right here, or two of them. I tested both of those and those tested out okay and that wasn't a problem, but uh, I got to looking at the bottom of this board and uh, and I noticed something that's probably the problem and I'll show it to you. Let me zoom in on it. If you can see this right here, there's a corroded connection there. And I'm betting that's probably part of the problem. Either that capacitor is leaking or something got on it to corrode that. But uh, one way I found it, and it's an old trick of uh, repairmen worldwide, is to start bridging capacitors if you suspect them. And uh, let me plug this in and I'll show you what I did. Here's the motor boating. Now if you uh, Take this capacitor right here, this small one, and just bridge that circuit. So I'm get it on there. Problem goes away. So I got a feeling. Got a feeling that's the problem. So uh, I'll go ahead and. Uh, unsolder that capacitor, take it out and uh, uh, replace it and see, uh, see how it works. I pulled the capacitor off the board down here and uh, stuck it in my capacitor tester and I was going to just see what, how it checks out. Okay, it's checking out a 221 microfarads and zero ESR, which is very good. I've never seen one above zero, <laughs> or I should say uh, below 0.01. So uh, I think this capacitor is fine. It doesn't appear to be leaking on the bottom or anything like that. So, uh, and now that I look at the board where I pulled that cap out of, if you can see it right here, back to where we were, the uh, trace is completely corroded off. And so that's probably what the issue is with this machine. I'll go ahead and uh, uh, put the capacitor back in and rebuild that trace with something and leave the camera running here while I do that so you can see what I'm doing. I'll try to zoom in a little more on it. So. 
you can get a little better idea of, of the process here. So, okay, let's get this guy back in there. I forgot what a pain it is to work on some of these printed circuit boards. Of course, when you put it back in, you always want to make sure you get the polarity right on the electrolytic, especially. There we go. That dropped in nicely. Okay, so we've got this one in there. I'm going to bend the lead over just a little bit so it'll won't fall out of the out of its hole. And I'm hoping you can see this on camera. Yeah, I think so. Go ahead and solder that one. Soldered the wrong one there, but it looked like it could use it anyway. We got that one and we just need to rebuild the trace between the two there so I'll get a little piece of wire and I have the uh, this is kind of an interesting thing here this is a piece of uh, uh, wire it's a silver wire out of a wire contact relay out of an old IBM key punch machine I used to work on many years ago and uh, they're very stiff they're silver coated and they make great uh, trace repair because you can form them any way you want and uh, we'll just put it on there and uh, Extend it over to the next side of that trace, which is on the right of your screen. So it'll be right here. So let me cut off about everything but a quarter inch on that. Sorry that my hand's in the way there. Let's see if I can put a clip on that or something to hold it on there for I... I did clean off the lead of the capacitor good so it wouldn't so it would take some solder. Okay. Well, let's catch the other side here if you can see that. I love the way those little silver wire contact work for this kind of thing because they take solder really well. Okay. That's on there. Let's uh, plug this thing in, see if that solved the motor boating issue. Okay, it's plugged in. Climbs up all the way. I think we got it. Beautiful. Well, that teaches us a little bit of a lesson before you start tearing into everything. The number one rule of repair work is always do a good visual inspection before you uh, start unsoldering and testing components. Had I done that, I would have seen that corroded joint there and uh, saved me a little bit of trouble, but at least I caught it early. So I'll go ahead and uh, Again, putting this back together and we'll uh, stick a tape in it and test it, see how it works. 
Okay, now that we're fairly confident that our repair job uh, works, uh, we can go ahead and uh, put this back together. Uh, but before we do that, we want to uh, uh, talk about uh, lubricating and cleaning a, uh, an older cassette uh, machine and uh, give you a couple of little tips about uh, cleaning the mechanism on these. And uh, those are if your uh, mechanism has sliding parts, like you see right here, anything that slides, you'll want to use grease. And anything that turns, uh, especially if it's in contact with metal, metal on metal, if it turns, you want to use a light oil. Uh, kind of like a clock oil or sewing machine oil or even gun oil works fine. Uh, there are a couple of products I just recently ran across that I really like. And uh, uh, here's one of them, and it's called Super Lube. And both of them are made by the same company. And I'm, i got to tell you, I'm not getting paid to promote these or anything. I just like them. Uh, these are very good lubricants. They're synthetic. They're completely synthetic and have no uh, petroleum products in it, so it won't uh, won't attack plastics or rubber. And uh, it's also a uh, dielectric, which means it can uh, uh, act as an insulator. You don't have to worry about using it in uh, uh, high voltage circuits, and it won't arc over and it won't conduct electricity. It's also food grade, as you can see here, and it's safe to use uh, on uh, mechanical uh, items around uh, where you're gonna do food processing. You know, even like drawer slides in your kitchen, uh, you, it's, you can use it on that. And uh, it's, it's a uh, clear grease, as I hope you can see that here. And it uh, it's fairly viscous. And uh, the other product, uh, as I said, is made by the same company. This is a spray lubricant. And uh, it's also made by Super Lube. It has the same properties. It's a dielectric. It's food grade. And it's very clean. And it's 100% uh, synthetic. And also contains PTFE, which uh, basically is Teflon. And it is known to be the most slippery uh, product on the planet right now. And so it's very good lubricant. And as I said, it's safe for uh, plastics and others. So what I did, I already cleaned this up and uh, uh, lubricated the, the parts in it that everything that moves. As I said, if you're going to uh, use it on sliding objects, uh, use the heavier grease and anything that rotates, light oil. Now when you clean these, I just uh, use something like a, a isopropyl alcohol and uh, on a cotton swab and uh, clean everything from uh, the tape guides to the, the head that you can see here and the capstan roller. Uh, alcohol won't harm rubber at all on that, so you can use that. And uh, you want to do the cleaning after the lubricant. That way, if you get a little aggressive with your lubrication, you can clean it off at that same time. And uh, clean all the rubber rollers that you can get a hold of. I kind of hid this now that I've got it halfway in, back in its case. But uh, here's a rubber belt that would require cleaning at some time. And... Uh, there's another belt under here. It's a red one. You can see that, that I already got to. And it's amazing, even after 40 years, this thing was built, I think, in 1976, 77 is when I bought it for about $60. Uh, but the belts and everything are, are good as new. Uh, they must be made out of real rubber because uh, real rubber lasts a long time, but uh, synthetic rubber... Uh, falls apart in about four or five years. So uh, anyway, this is a really nice machine. Another thing I uh, wanted to tell you about is uh, instead of using a spray can on very small parts like this, which would get 
everywhere. Uh, go down to your hobby shop and get a little, uh, one of these little needle bottles and, uh, spray it inside there. And, uh, that way you can, if you just need a little pinpoint of lubricant, you can just go down here and just touch it on there and squeeze. And that way you don't have to spray it and waste all your lube and get it everywhere else. So just a little insert there. That's about it. Probably the last thing you'll want to do is if you have one, and you can make one of these, it's a head demagnetizer. And the uh, way it works, it's just an AC magnet. And uh, I activate it by pushing the button and waving it around the record and play head right here. And slowly move away before you let off on the button and then let off on the switch. That way you won't, if you let off on the switch while you've got it in contact with the head, you're going to magnetize it on that one last cycle of the AC. So you want to basically move away. And that's about it. And so we'll go ahead and uh, put the rest of the case on this and uh, we'll do one final test on camera here and see how it works. So I've got... One, two, three, four, five screws left. And hopefully, so one screw goes in here. That looks like a small tapered one. Now, we can put these back in. Last one goes down in here. There we go. Okay. Well, let's plug it in and see how it plays without a tape. Okay. Now for the acid test. We're all done, got her plugged in. We're gonna slip an ancient old tape in here. And gonna hit the play button. Well, it plays. Uh, let's zero the tape counter and uh, hit the record button and we'll make a little test recording here. I can see the meter moving slightly so that indicates that it is recording and picking up a signal. Test, test. And the tape's moving fine. Let's hit stop. We'll check the rewind now. Rewind it back to zero. Hit play. recording here. I can see the meter moving slightly, so that indicates that it is recording and picking up a signal. Test, test. And 
Tape's moving fine. Let's hit stop. Okay, and we'll hit rewind, fast forward. I think we have a successfully completed project here. We can put the uh, empty battery pack back in. As I get all the little battery helpers out here. Anyway, we'll stick her in there like that. And there we go. Well, that ought to conclude our uh, video today. Um, I think uh, maybe on the next video we'll deal with these alkaline batteries. I've got a good rant I can do on that one. So we'll give that a try. <laughs> and I uh, want to thank you for watching. Uh, if you got the time, hit the uh, subscribe button in the lower right hand corner of the screen. It says DVR Productions. And uh, then ring the bell if you want to get notified. Once again, appreciate it. We'll catch you next time.